everyone, and welcome to this edition of Spartan Sports Report. Glad you could join us, and uh, glad a couple other guys here could join me on this edition of Spartan Sports Report. Ronnie Wiley and Nathan Shaw, and appreciate both of you being here tonight. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having us on. You, uh, Nathan's taken over play-by-play uh, -play duties for TV3 at uh, football and basketball games. Yeah. Talk a little bit how you got into that. Well, uh, it's crazy hearing that because it's just like kind of like a crazy dream come true. I've always wanted to do stuff like that. I've always wanted to be a play-by-play -play commentator. Um, I've always wanted to be on TV, period, since I was in second grade. So kind of hearing that, actually, like people saying that towards me, it's just crazy to believe that. So, but yeah, it kind of started my sophomore year. I, uh, I was talking to my teacher. Well, first, how I got involved with it was I entered into the... CHSA classes, radio TV, mm -hmm. intro to radio TV and everything. And I told my teacher, I said, uh, hey, I have an idea. And she was like, what's your idea? I said, let's call it, let's have this thing called SSN 10 and 1, Spartan Sports Network, 10 questions in one minute. And let's interview all these athletes, get all the funny stories about them, get all the serious stories about them, just cover it all within this one minute interview and like see how many questions we can get within that one minute. And um, she was just like, yeah, let's go for it. And she just let me go with it she gave me the keys to the car and i just drove it so i mean it was crazy to think that how willing she was and that was mrs job and now her and i work closely together all the time on graphics and play-by-play -play and how to prepare for games so it's just a fun learning process along the way from john justin job and even ron and fran so and it's just crazy to think about that i've gotten to this point Got Ron here tonight. Ron yeah. and I go way back. Uh, uh, way thir back. 30 years at the radio station. <laughs> but, uh, Long time ago. Uh, talk about your experiences of, of getting involved with Spartan Athletics. Um, I, I, I guess mine goes back to working at the radio station, you know, pushing those buttons, making you guys sound good, uh, which didn't really need that much help because you guys always sounded good. Uh, but here at TV3... So with, let me say this, without the right guy pushing those buttons, we don't <laughs> yeah, sound good. I don't know about that. Uh, well, thank you. But um, mine was, uh, I worked with Justin at the radio station. He worked at the radio station. Mm -hmm. And they called me and said, hey, uh, we need somebody to interview people at the fair. I did it, that was 2007. Then they said, hey, by the way, um, you want to do some games? I did games with Ben Houston. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got into a play the next year or whatever, and then... Uh, in 09, the last game of the 08-09 season, um, John Conn said, hey, you're going to do a game with Fran. And it was, you know, 12 years after that, we didn't stop. And then uh, uh, Fran had, um, you know, uh, uh, had to step away, and, and Nate stepped in and, uh, you know, been rolling ever since. You know, uh, we talk about Fran. And, and He's a legend. What a great friend and a, and a great man. Um, I grew up listening to him, yeah. and I grew up wanting to be on the radio, and uh, had had that opportunity. Uh, this is my 31st season, and um, uh, never had any training in it, and it shows. But no. uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, Fran's a person that I always looked up to, and uh, certainly um, one day uh, I needed a fill-in uh, on the radio, and I asked Fran to to set in, and and to me, getting to work with the man He's that I grew legend. up listening to yes. uh, was quite an honor for me. Um, and I'll ask you, Nate, uh, who you might uh, emulate, uh, who you listen to or who you watch. I know that uh, Fran was one for me. Also, um, Don Fisher, who has been voice of the Hoosiers all these years, uh, I think he from a national standpoint, he's the best there is. But, yeah. but who, who do you like? Well, it's, it goes back to those obvious guys like Mike Breen, uh, Joe Buck, some NFL commentator, NBA commentator. I mean, those are some of the obvious ones. But, I mean, in reality, I go back and look at it, it's like Fran. I mean, I grew up listening to him whenever I was a kid, uh, watching TV3. I'd watch the games. I'd even watch uh, CHS Day, and I'd grow up watching a lot of those kids on there, and I was like, man, I wish I could be a part of something like that. And Fran, whenever I remember kind of – when I first got involved with TV3, well, when I first met the people at TV3, John, Justin, Fran, and Ron, it was back in eighth grade. I'm sure none of them remember this. Well, my cousin actually worked for him, and he was doing cameras that night. I came in, met all the crew, and I was kind of like a shy little kid in like a candy store because it was like it was like seeing all these things that you prized and all these things that you wanted to be and all these things that you wished you could be and wish you could have too, and you were sitting there watching the cameras get taken down, and you're like, oh, my gosh. This is crazy watching this, and 
So it was kind of like growing up watching them, uh, John, Justin, Fran, even though I didn't know John or Justin because they've always been behind the cameras. It's just those kind of guys have always emulated my style after. I mean, graphics-wise, I try to learn a lot off of John and Justin when it comes to editing and everything. And then Mrs. Job, ever since, um, ever since my sophomore year, I've tried to stylize my editing and animation, even regular editing and graphics off of that. And Fran, a lot of my play-by-play, -play, I try to emulate. But um, one thing I always like tell kids who are younger than me that are trying to get into this role, a play-by-play -play or color commentator that have been kind of stepping up over the past few months, over the past year, I've been telling them like, you can look up to as many people as you can, but in reality, you gotta be your own. You gotta create your own flow exactly. and be your own different commentator than the last. So even though Fran's shoes are so big to fill in this play-by-play -play role, I look at it, I'm like, I've gotta create my own flow because I can't be known. I can't always be known as the person who stepped in for Fran. I got to be known as like Nathan Shaw as someone who kind of made his own flow with the game. Absolutely. Who's your cousin? Uh, Jacob Bentley. Oh, Jacob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was a, he was a good guy. Yeah. That, I t the camera. Uh, I mean, we had so many great camera people over the years. To make you talk about the guys at the studio. It's the camera people, the guys behind the truck that makes us all sound good and look mm -hmm. good and. Uh, I never forget Fran. Just the first game we ever I ever did with him was against Centerville, um, or was it Northeastern? Uh, I don't remember. Anyway, it was it was February twenty fifth, two thousand nine. I'll never forget that. And um, I just remember how smooth he was. Mm -hmm. You know, I would always give him the scores and point you know to my little pad there, mm -hmm. and he'd go. 25 points for the Northeastern yeah. shooter. You know, he was so just so smooth about everything. <laughs> and the voice. Yeah, the voice. He, Fran is so smooth. Mm -hmm. And what's funny about Fran is that he is a really funny guy. I mean, off camera, mm -hmm. we'd be talking to him, he'd have me in stitches. I mean, it was mm -hmm. just a, to, to think that I got to work with somebody that you looked up to, who you were somebody that I looked up to, you know, listening to you during the games all those years. And believe me, radio is much harder to do than television. Well... I don't know, because I've never done television. Yeah, it's much I, I think harder. I would have a harder time because I have to talk a lot. Yeah, you have to mention <laughs> and, everything. And, and Dave, my partner Dave, will tell you that uh, he has a hard time getting words in sometimes. Right. But, but uh, yeah, I've really got to, yeah. to paint that word picture yeah. where the picture with TV is it's there. there but, yeah. uh, but still, it's a big job and a big, big responsibility. Yeah. Uh, to do the TV. Maybe, yeah. maybe someday I can do a TV game. Yeah. I mean, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. That'd be so, fantastic. Uh, what What are your plans to uh, to further this that you love so much? So, uh, well, originally it was to go. It was just to go to college, or even at first, I didn't know I wanted to be a commentator for a really long time. When I was in second grade, I always wanted to be a comedian. I always looked up guys like Adam Sandler. I always wanted to be the next Adam Sandler on TV, where I was cracking jokes, or I was in Billy Madison, or The Water Boy, or whatever. And that was always my goal: was to be like Will Ferrell and Adam Sandler have movies and TV shows and be on SNL. And then after that, after I kind of let that dream go, I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. I'm not that funny. So I was like, all right, uh, I fell in love with sports. And that's when I kind of uh, got into the commentary and videography. And I do a lot of videography on the side. So originally I was kind of thinking, like, if I didn't go to school, if I wasn't able to go to school for it and if I couldn't find the right school, that I could just go into videography, do wedding videography and uh, sports videography and kind of, live off that, but then I realized that school was necessary, and um, I got a lot of that help through Job, who kind of helped me realize that I definitely need to go to school for it, so that's why I uh, eyed IU. So next year, I'll be going to IU, uh, Indiana University of Bloomington, for sports media, so I'm excited for it. I was down there last night to, to basketball game and walked by the uh, media room yeah. there uh, Mark Cuban has, has put in. Uh, it's really beautiful. I hope, uh, I hope in a couple of years when I go down there, that I'll see you setting and they're doing something. Yeah, hopefully. Them. That's the goal. Is uh, I've been talking to the professor there, uh, Dr. Clavio, and him and I have been talking a lot. I went there and visited last Friday, actually, and we were talking about um, uh, he was telling me how I'd get the chance to commentate women's volleyball games if I wanted to or women's soccer, men's soccer, uh, just the minor sports because boys' basketball or men's basketball in uh, college is harder to get to that level because it's Fox Sports running the whole mm -hmm. thing. They do have a student night that you can do. That's not. That's only if you're a senior. So, right now my hope is just to be able to commentate women's basketball. And that's my first goal. And as I go on, is to kind of improve by then, get some internships, and further my career just through building those network connections with people within the Fox Sports, 
Big Ten, uh, ESPN, and all that. Yeah, that's impressive that you have these goals. And when I was your age, I just all I wanted to be was on the radio. I didn't understand the production aspect of it all. I didn't. I just wanted to be on the radio. That's all I cared about. Um, and but now I look back, and radio has changed so much in the 30 some years since I started that you need that production stuff. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you know how to create, I didn't know how to, I don't know how to create graphics. You know how to create graphics. So you, I mean, you're making yourself very um, versatile um, and not just having that skill of being on there. You can do stuff behind the scenes. I commend you for that, you know. Competition's great though, when you get to that level. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the more you know. to get To get those positions. Yeah, but, that's uh, why I've kind of taken it uh, on myself to kind of step into this role now and kind of do as much as I can and Whenever it came to commentating, whenever Joe, whenever Joe let me know that John was wanting to try to see if I could commentate the boys' game against Jennings County, and I was nervous at first. I kind of thought of being like, uh, I don't know if you want me doing that, especially to be in a boys' game, because I've done a couple of girls' games here. I did a couple of girls' games with Fran and Ron, and uh, I remember that boys' game. I asked Ron, I was like, Hey, Ron, like, can I do play by play? <laughs> Ron and what was did little, I say? You were a little unsure at first, but you did. You were willing to go with it at yeah. first. I, really... well, I, yeah, I, I, I was like, okay, because I, I didn't want, I didn't want you to set yourself up to yeah. fail. Yeah. But then I thought, you know what? This is probably the best learning experience. Yeah. Is to, it's to do, and you did a great job. I mean, yeah. as as we grew together, and again, it's all about chemistry. You know that, you know, that, mm -hmm. Sam. It's all about chemistry, and and as we grew, we knew what each other's mm -hmm. roles were. And you can see that we got, our broadcast got better. Yeah, they did. You really And right. um, you know that's what it's all about. It's that chemistry. You can have two great, you know, like there, there's nothing to me. You talk about people you grew up listening to. Mine was Marty and Joe. Yeah. You know, and they had the great chemistry. Those are the Reds, by the way. I know it's before mm. your time. <laughs> <laughs> they were the Reds broadcast, and Marty and Joe just had this chemistry mm. about them, and that's what makes a great, you know, uh, you and Brett had uh, had had great chemistry. That's what makes it great. But what I'm impressed to hear about you say is that you you, you recognize the landscape. Mm -hmm. you re and, and that's impressive to me where you're like, well, listen, I, I probably can't break into this. I want to break into it eventually, but I may have to go and do this, this, mm -hmm. this before I get there. And, and that's incredible that you know that. And, and if you want to do sports, you know, I've specialized in basketball um, in the last, 12 years or so, I've, I forget how long I've, I've been in on the football broadcast, but only yeah. as a color analyst. Um, and I've not done play by play with that, but the sports you're talking about, you gotta know a little bit about all of yeah. them. I don't know I don't know enough about volleyball to call a volleyball I'll be the game first or a admit. soccer game. But oh, he's soccer, that's how I first met yeah. him, was uh, John calls him and goes, oh, we're doing a soccer game. I, I, I don't know anything about soccer. Ben Houston was the guy that would be the lead guy, and. And because so, Ben knows all about it, and I'm like, we're bringing this kid. He goes, he knows soccer, and I was like, here I am trying to do play by play. After I think the middle of the broadcast, I'm like, he's doing it all. I don't know what he's know what's going on. You know what's funny yeah. about that is that was yeah. my first time like being first on air. First time ever, yeah. yeah. And, and you uh, were great. Yeah, that was my first time being on air, and I remember kind of sitting there, and I was like, wow, I was like, this is crazy. I was like, this is like a dream come true. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I've gotten, to, to I've gotten to commentate soccer, and I was playing JV at the time. I told my coach, I was like, hey, coach. Uh, it's my sophomore year. I'm probably not going to get any starting time for varsity tonight, so or any time for varsity at all. I was I was no good at soccer, and I was like, so can I uh, can I commentate a TV three? And then uh, what well, was kind of a last minute thing as well, because it was like 40 minutes in, and they're like, hey, we need you to commentate. Or Joe yeah. came up to me and was like, hey, can you commentate? Fran's running late. Uh, Ron's running late, so it may just be you for like the first 20 minutes. That's right. Yeah, I was wow. running late too. Yeah, I, I was. I was like, man, I because the game starts so early, and I'm like, I don't know if I can make it. Talking yeah. about butterflies. Yeah, yeah that was that there. was scary. Yeah. And then uh, I remember kind of stepping in there. I was like, my heart was beating really fast. I was like, oh my gosh, I was writing the open on the spot. And now it's funny because it's like now every week before a game, I'm sitting there writing opens in my room or typing an open on the computer, and it just comes like, natural. It's not any good right now. I mean, it's it's good, but it's not. At the point where I'd like it to be, but it's You'll funny grow. watching it. Yeah. You'll grow. Yeah, and, and the more the more guys that you can sit down and work with. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, with me, with Ron, mm -hmm. if if that ever opportunity, well, you've worked with Ron, but I'm just saying others mm -hmm. that um, you take from them um, what you like and, and take yeah, what you like or leave the rest. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's it's good experience. Over the yeah. years, you know, I, I worked with some great play-by-play -play guys before I ever took over play-by-play -play and, and learned so much from... Smoothest from transition, Sammy, I will say. You went from 
doing all, I mean, to where, you, again, you talked about with uh, basketball, you don't get to talk as much because there's, the play's so consistent. To go from your color commentary to play-by-play -play the next year was a seamless, smoothless no, thank transition. You. Thank you. But, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd had uh, some good guys in, work in at, my yeah. ears, you know, starting with, with John White and then, yeah, yeah. then yeah, Brett, Brett Briscoe yeah. and, and Matt uh, Turner, Matt Turner yeah. uh, Tom Lee. You Tom know, Lee, yeah. Just, uh, some great guys that I listened to long yeah. enough, uh, and uh, learn one thing you got to learn, and you've learned this that mm -hmm. you can't sit there and be a fan. You can't sit there and watch yeah. the game. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's you, hard. You've got to be involved <laughs> in the yeah. game. Yeah. And, yeah, and know what's going on. Well, it's funny. I found myself on Friday's game against the. Uh, was that against again? Oh man, that's bad that he forgot already. Um, oh, we forgot too. Friday, Friday's Friday night's game. I know Anderson was Saturday. Yeah. Friday was. Shenandoah, Shen no. no, no, Centerville, Centerville, Centerville Shenandoah yes. was the game before. Yeah, yeah so it was Centerville, and uh, I was mistaking it for Cardinal Ritter because they beat both teams by about 30, the mm -hmm. Cardinal Ritter and Centerville, but I remember watching the Centerville game, there were so many parts of it where I was like, man, I'd love to be like a fan right now, but it was like, but then also I kind of timed that in with being a fan as well to being a commentator, kind of being like, you know, the more fan like I am, the more of a fan I am, I can also tie that in and kind of bring down, bring that down and tone up my commentator and kind of bring the excitement to the game at a point. So like whenever Paige Dunaway got an and one, I said, Dunaway drives, goes coast to coast, lays it in, that's good, and like got really excited, kind of jumped out of my seat a little bit, and like that's good. I found the fan yeah. in me, but also like kind of found a level to bring it to where it was yes. also like yes. good well, commentary. I, 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 I've uh, been a fan uh, of <laughs> one particular play, and, and uh, I got, a, got, got it in my ear. Uh, we were doing the sectional game, uh, in, in Newcastle, it was against Richmond. And uh, we were killing them. And it was the end of the first quarter. We were way up. And th they kind of let Grant go slam it. And I, I went, yeah! I mean, I went, and John, John said, you ruined it! Because I, I, I knocked the system out and everything. And John's a mayor going, don't be so loud! And so I now I'm more controlled with my... You know, well, fandom. I, I get a little loud at times. Yeah, well, but, you yeah. can't help it. I'm like, sorry, John. I that was a, I couldn't believe that they let him slam it that way. Yeah, you gotta you gotta find the balance between yeah. peaking the mic I, and. Well, whenever you get the earful, you know you gotta. Yeah. Okay, well, I, you know, I'll find the balance from that. <laughs> you know, and, we 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 talk about that, but um, you mentioned Joe Nuxall and, yeah. and there was Slick Leonard that yeah. that those guys were homers, and, and yeah. I'll admit I'm I'm a, I'm homer, a homer now yeah. now if. When we used to do years ago, we would do the entire sectional, yeah. and you had to sit there. Say Union County and Franklin County were playing with the, playing each other. Yeah. To me, that was much more difficult to do because uh, you just had to be down the road, and down right. the middle, yeah. right? Down the middle. Well, it was easier to be down the middle with teams right. you were not invested in. It was hard because uh, I remember uh, when we did the sectional at the bowl a couple of years ago. We did all the games before COVID knocked everything out, mm -hmm. and uh, there, there was times where John pulled us together and was like, "Okay, guys, no homering. You know, we don't call them us or we. It's Connorsville." And I would catch myself say, "We Connorsville." Because um, that was very difficult because it's – and then plus the CS play Greensburg, and we're on the visitor's side, mm -hmm. you know, of the score, book, score. whereas yeah. we're at the bowl where you've seen us in the home. That was difficult. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's it, to me it's hard to not homer for the Spartans since we've been doing it for so yeah. long. It's funny thinking about that sectional game because uh, um, that was – Greensburg is who beat us on home court in yeah. the sectional championship game that week or that night and then a year later we beat them we home, beat them on their, on their home, yeah home well board. the same thing the year when 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 we hosted it they beat us both times on our floor mm -hmm. we go there last year and beat them both times on their floor yeah. so and now it's back on our that's floor that's what really brought out my inner fan was yeah. i was filming like a mini documentary on uh, the basketball team last year like a seven minute documentary piece See, look and, at you. Uh, you got the, now you're a documentary <laughs> uh, filmmaker. Well, That's awesome. On, we're he's going to be tuned in Fox Sports 1. We're, yeah. yeah, he'll, he'll you know, He's, he's, he's uh, got the, the talent to do it and, mm -hmm. and the looks, and it takes looks, too. You and yeah. I, I don't, don't know how you ever made it on TV. I don't know we how made it on television either. I mean, we got radio. the wide-angle lens going here with me. Yeah. Uh, right, you're absolutely right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was making that documentary, and I remember kind of like being there, and that brought out my inner fan at the Silver Creek game whenever it was a uh, – Regional championship, Silver Creek. They're down by one. Cole off the shot, four seconds to go. And I remember yes. I almost busted out crying 
because like I was so invested in that and I felt such a part of the team during that mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. And like during it. the whole during the whole end of the season, I followed him for about a month and uh, filmed this documentary on him. And I remember how invested I was in the team and felt a part of it. And they let go of that shot, and I remember almost like tearing up a little bit. But I was like, I gotta get these shots. Yeah. So like I brought it down, and I was like, all right, I gotta go get these shots. And I got the shots of the players crying, them hugging yeah. the other, uh, hug- hugging the other team. So that was uh, Th- that, that. That right there was a state championship game. Mm-hmm. You know, that, the, the, the the team who won that, well, obviously Silver Creek won. Yeah. And you got to think, you know, how much is that? Again, new season. We we we've talked about it for years, Sammy. This is a new season, new team. But you can't help but wonder. You can't, can't help, help but wonder, think. but, yeah. but um, we can't. A lot of, there's a lot of high expectations. Yeah. And, this year especially. And we can't be reading the press. Players right. cannot be reading, reading yeah. polls and all that because it takes a lot of, takes a lot of luck. Yeah. We, got, we have a lot of talent, right. but it takes a lot of luck. The draw makes all the difference in the world, yeah. and, and, you know, somebody out, injured, whatever. So yeah. uh, the, two years, year. the two years we won the state championship, yes, we had talent, but we had, we had uh, luck on our side yeah. as well. Well, you think about last year, we had that period where we lost like four games in a row and we didn't look good. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the game that I think really turned it around for us was against that Lawrence North, yeah, Lawrence where we about Lawrence North, 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 where we okay. about beat Lawrence mm-hmm. North on our floor, mm-hmm. and and had opportunity. I think after that, that was where we okay, we got that four game losing streak mm-hmm. out of our system. Um, you know, mm-hmm. again, I can't help as a fan think, oh, this is going to be a great a great season, but again, we got to play the games, and as as we know from Kerry. It's it's 20 dress rehearsals until, mm-hmm. or however games they have until the to sectional. I'm sure he's keeping the kids focused on the next game, and that's Union County. Yeah, yeah. And uh, speaking of that, Union County is this week. Uh, yeah. My favorite night of the year, yeah, the night I know. before Thanksgiving. I, I look know. at it as as homecoming because everybody. You've been counting down since yeah. probably I've about two months down. ago. I think well, I as soon going. as as soon as we lost uh, in that regional championship, mm-hmm. I knew what the number was, 200 and. 280 something. I don't know. Whatever it was to the next game. So, yeah. So yes. Yeah, so oh yeah. You could every, like at the fair. You walk up to Sammy. How many? Yeah, and he'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. I remember uh, Coach Jackson. I've been in here, and he was like, only, only 45 days left, and he was like, yeah. total tip off, and I was like, I was like, Sammy's got that down. So, it, yeah. and it, it kind of is engraved in my head now. Now, uh, well, right now I'm working on the boys basketball hype video for that's releasing Thanksgiving or the night before Thanksgiving. So we're working on that. I've probably put in about 30 hours on that in the last week of editing. And uh, it's bad thing is, is it sounds like completely false, but really spent about 30 hours on that thing editing it. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And, like, this is the most enticed I felt with this team oh, ever yeah. since I was especially commentating, editing, putting together videos for them. I've never felt this enticed with the team and kind of been like, wow, we have well, a real shot. Yeah, and especially it's your senior year, too, mm-hmm. and you got to, we only have a couple seniors this year. And it's the, mm-hmm. the younger. I mean, so this is, uh, you know, again, this is your swan song. So obviously, this is, you know, that extra. Oh, for we're, you. We're, we'll be sh- you'll be shedding some tears for the yeah, end of the season. We're, we're looking for big things yeah. for you. We got some film from uh, Centerville game the other night that you mm-hmm. called. I called on the radio, you called it on. On the TV, let's let's take a look at that now. Lady Spartans been playing pretty well. Of course, they lost uh, Saturday night uh, in a heartbreaker at Anderson, but three and four on the season, uh, guys, and I think they're doing much better. Yeah, I mean, you gotta look at it. They had a chance against Anderson to go over five. Well, they yes, they've been over 500, I believe. Mm-hmm, right. And that's the first time we've seen that in about three seasons, maybe four seasons. Oh, maybe. At, least, at least. Yeah, at least that. And one thing I liked about Michelle, and you guys talked about it in your pregame, mm-hmm. was that you know she came in her first season without hardly any time because they hired somebody else, that guy quit, and then she came in. But what I like about her is that she is teaching these girls. Mm-hmm. I like her. And you, and you can see it. Yeah. You can see it from year to year that they're really uh, buying into the system. Yeah. When she first came, uh, some of them dribbled the ball and they'd have, have their head down looking at the floor. Right. Now they're they're seeing the floor and seeing yeah. the other the players. The confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The girls have a lot more confidence. And you got to watch even with the depth as well. I mean, you got players that are coming off the bench, two sophomores and McKenna Lucas and Haley Simbach, girls that haven't touched the court mm-hmm. as a varsity member yet. And they're making huge plays this season. I mean, McKenna going into Friday night averaged 1.8. Haley coming into uh, Friday night as well 
averaged 5.2. And mm -hmm. you got to look at it. I mean, even these younger players are buying in. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think I've seen this much of a bought-in system in the past couple of years of girls' varsity basketball. Uh, you're right. It's They're fun to watch. Um, you know, they're only going get, to get better. I know that uh, Coach talks about getting 1% better every game. And, uh, oh, yeah, and you see that. And what I love about the girls is that they, they look like they're having fun mm -hmm. out there. Um, you know, they, they score and, and they're clapping and they're having a good time. And, you know, again, seeing Paige right there, just seeing her develop from a freshman to where she is now, look at that nice dish mm -hmm. inside. I mean, it, it, we've seen the growth. Her and Rubel, I mean, we've seen them mature. Carson Morgan, she's... Yeah, Morgan. She, she's well, she's a, a transfer from Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's, she's, she's fun to really watch. really been a star-studded player for us over the... I mean, her and Paige combined for 40 right, against yeah. Cardinal Ritter. I remember covering that game with uh, my camera. And they they really are a great duo. They know they played AAU with each other a couple times before, is what they're telling me. And I mean, I think it's mostly it's this chemistry. They, I yeah. mean, you look at it. I remember last year kind of talking. This is a young gun team. This year I look at it. I'm like, this is an older team, but they've got plenty of those young players that are depth pieces. You right. got Sarah, Abby, uh, Haley, McKenna. You got more players off the bench Chase, that are looking to start. Will help. She's going to come along yes. as a freshman. Yeah. The great thing about that, there's the final 66-18 of the night, Friday night against Centerville, but every lady Spartan scored in that game. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's I crazy. mean, that, that, as, as a coach, that's what you want. You want mm -hmm. every girl, every player who suited up, you want them to get their hands on the ball and put that ball through that hoop. And uh, again, we haven't seen this in a while, and we're seeing the development of these players under the tutelage of the coach, who, you know, I think she was a fantastic find. I, I've told her, I said, you, you, you were the, even though mm -hmm. she came in after that guy, she was the best pick yes, for yes. this program, and, uh, without question. A lot of experience. Uh, yeah. Uh, she's done well wherever she's been, whether a player or, or a coach. So yeah. uh, we're fortunate. We're fortunate to have the coaching staffs that we have, I think, at all, at all sports. Yeah. Uh, of course, Kerry Brown. Um, oh, what can you say about he, him? He is so respected around the state. Yeah. I want to plug, once again, we talk about it, um, the Spartans will be playing in the Hall of Fame Classic at Newcastle. I believe it's the 29th, maybe the 30th of, of um, December. Tickets are on sale at the athletic office. They're good for all four games. Uh, it's a bargain. I think, I don't know, if it's $10 or $12. Uh, one nice thing, we don't have pay to get right, in, Yeah, but, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, four of the best teams. And if you're invited to the Hall of Fame Classic. That's at the Field House? That's at the Field House in Muncie or in, excuse me, in Newcastle. Newcastle. Um, if you're invited to that, you're considered one of the yeah. best four in the state. Yeah. And it's, it's defense, it's Kerry Brown's defense, and some great players that we have, great team players that have landed us there at the Hall of Fame Classic. And, and what a defense. Uh, I mean, I, I've seen some great defenses, but it seems like the defenses are getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, with I mean, last year's defense was every game that every team that we played did not score their average. Right. Yeah, and right. to add yeah. another take to this, I mean, no player averages over ten points on the team. No player right. averages over nine on the team from last season. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And that's right. It's that's a right. well-rounded scoring yeah. team. I mean, you have Toby averaging eight point eight, um, Bobwell averaging one point two, Gage Brown averaging four point two, um, even Caleb Sparks averaging six point three. And uh, James Williams averaging from 4.1. And you have so many of these players that, I mean, even though their score only adds to about 40 a game, I mean, they all show out. They know their role. A and team. It's hard to defend hard, because you don't know who, who might yeah. yeah, you never know who's going to yeah. shoot the ball the best that night or you never know who's going to score the most that night. It just really depends on the night basis. And they're just well, they're just deep. They're a deep team. Yeah, very they're well-rounded, and they've got a good shot this year. I think they do. Well, guys, that's it. It's been fun. Um, yeah. Best luck to you Thank on you. your broadcast career <laughs> and, and your broadcast this season. And Ron, good work with yeah, you. Yeah, always. always. Always a always. pleasure. Absolutely. Pleasure is all yours. <laughs> no, it is. Of course it is. You know that. <laughs> I'll do it for this edition of Spartan Sports Report. Thanks, everyone.